mention those names. They are responsible for the complete breakdown of law and order in a quiet state. That is why we are saying, we are asking the Inspector General of Police, we have respect for that office. Ordinarily, with the state of insecurity in the state, he's supposed to have resigned. The Commissioner of Police in Accra, we are calling on Mr. President to look into the issue of security very, very seriously. Because in very civilized environment, the Commissioner of Police in Accra, we say, should have resigned. Because he has failed woefully. And this is, the, the reason for this is, are not far-fetched. Okay. This, is, this is, he is working under the supervision of the governor. And so he has failed in discharging his duty because he has compromised. Because statistics have shown that. The, the, the death of Paul Liang uh, was murdered in cold blood, gruesomely murdered in cold blood on the 20th day of June 2010. It's one case too many. Okay. Well, the, the, now that you mentioned it, Paul, Paul Liang's uh, brother, was that political? Benga, because because uh, subsequently, when police investigations, luckily enough, one of the assassins was said to have been arrested. Yes. And he confessed and he named one more the... About, 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 about Tom. Yes. About Tom. Yes. What I don't understand is what subsequently led to the arrest of a leading acquaintance like Senator About Thank you very no, much. So that, be, that gives the pressure that some of these uh, security issues in Akwaibo are political. Thank you so much. Let me be very pointed on this fact. And I want to back up just one step before I play your question. You see, Governor Akpabio, three months after his swearing in, when he was sworn in, three months after, he inaugurated an amalgamation of called boys under the name Youth Caucus. This inauguration ceremony took place in governor's office annex. And the governor himself, Goswell Akpabil, presided over that ceremony. Now, this was an amalgamation of all the called boys he used to get into office. When he entered office, because he promised them all sorts, he now brought them together and gave the name Youth Caucus inaugurated them in governor's office annex, and it was in person, thereby giving the event an establishment protocol. In other words, this is a government function, this is a government-recognized body, but yet full of cultists. They hoisted their flags and danced in the cult way, in the presence of the governor. After that, they were given vehicles. After that, they were given all manner of offices. And within a period of few months, the security situation in the state of church. So there is a causal relationship between this event, which was attended by many people. A government event is not a private affair. So there are several people have given the venue and the people in attendance. After that, there was a causal relationship between that event and the stupendous increase in the rate of crime, kidnap, and insecurity in the state. So having said that, I make bold to declare here that 98% of the security issues in a quiet bomb state, are politically motivated and driven by the state governor in a bid to pursue all opponents and opposition out of the state in an undeserved bid to scuttle that ambition of others and hold on to second term in office, which is not automatic. Conversely, could it also be that because of the way Amanda, the governor, got into office, he wasn't the anointed candidate of his immediate predecessor? He emerged probably solely on his merit, and he could not be regarded to be a godson to any godfather. And probably because of the way he came in, he doesn't have political IOUs to pay anybody. Could it be, uh, uh, as a result of some people being dissatisfied, want to hold a leech on him and control him? Are we that, that is not true. Kind of That's not true because you see, Akwaibom State is a politically conscious environment. In 2000, in other words, I'm talking about people who had left office, yes. but who still want to be politically relevant. No, that and is, that confronted is not with true. somebody who came into office is occupying the driver's seat now, and he doesn't see himself as holding political allegiance to. No, such but you see, but how do you explain the political evolution in Akwaibom State from 2003, when the former governor of the state was seeking re-election in 2003? Ten contestants ran against him. In 2007, we had 53 governorship aspirants. But in 2010, just a year before the next polls, the next election, 
we don't have any governorship aspirant contesting against the incumbent. Except. What is responsible for that? Does it mean that... Are you saying there are no... I thought people like uh, Senator John Rapal did. Yeah, so but is he not going through political persecution because the governor feels that he knows it all and he must seek re-election by all means? So we must really be sincere about what is happening in Akwaibu State. What happened to the governorship aspirant that was shot and was at the engineer Ekong Dongwa and the mother was kidnapped and because okay. they could not pay a ransom because he, uh, he had to seek medical attention abroad. The mother was killed some weeks back and the, the cops deposited on the roadside. Is that, still, is, is that still a function of political opposition as the governor has said that political opposition in the state are responsible for all the killings we're experiencing in the states? That is not true. The governor must be sincere. Ordinarily, he should not, if he's really in the know of what he is doing as a state chief executive, he wouldn't blame, he wouldn't put the blame on the opposition because there's a complete breakdown of law and order. He has failed. But we also must, still this is security, mm. probably this will be the, the last question. Okay. Uh, but we must also not ignore, ignore the fact that there's no love loss between the governor and his immediate predecessor in office. But that is... That this, is, is this is an open thing. Well, the, gov this, the former governor of the state has only advised the incumbent against profligacy and mendacity. We are running a government of propaganda in Akwaibum State. What you see on the media is just what we describe it as media hyping of an exaggerated position on what is taking place in Akwaibum. I, I don't know so what you the mean by media hyping. I, 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 I went on the personal visit to Akwaibum. Uh, uh, yeah, to Uyo. Okay. On uh, the invitation of a friend to attend a function. So what did you see? And I saw some things. What did you I see? I saw construction going on. Yes, at what point? I, I, I decided to... That all these advertorials in the newspaper that I read every time, yes. uh, questions Governor Pabio must answer. Yes. And some other, some of those people will list those questions, yes. list those projects that they are not existing. I decided to be asking my friend questions. Yes. That this project, where, where are they? Did you see the and independent I'm, power plants? You've been seeing... You've been I, didn't on, go to, I didn't go to that one. But I saw the flyover that were under construction. Yes. I saw the government... The governor's lodge, the new governor's lodge, yes. which was almost ready then, okay. being consulted by Julius Berger. Yes, uh, at 6.5 billion. So yeah. many other things. And the governor does not feel that and the ordinary meetings of okay, the state. Okay, now let's talk, about, develop, let's talk so, about development in Akwaibom. What's your beef with what the governor is well, now, doing let me, in let, let, let me enlighten Nigerians who don't have access to excess money. In other, in order to access the media. You see, for the festival of fallacies, there is no development at all. And I'll explain. Now, development and performance is relative to available resources. In other words, to whom much is given, much is expected. Governor Pabio has gotten over one trillion naira in the last three years. And I'll give you my sources, very, very clear. Federal Minister of Finance has made this easy. The website is there. In the last three years, the man has gotten over 800 billion in terms of direct federal allocation. In the last three years, there's been excess crude account sharing, which is foreign currency denominated over time. We have captured that. Not forgetting ecological funds, not forgetting internally generated revenue. When you pull all this together, which are empirical facts, you will arrive at the excess of one trillion naira for a state that has very small population, 3,000 something square meters, the impact should but be the manifest. Hostile environment. Created by the man to. No, to, no, no. no I'm talking about the topography of this thing. No, 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 no. no, 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 no we have the best topography. We have, let, let, let me clear this very quickly. The Niger is a hostile region. You can't compare our terrain to Bayelsa. So let me, say, let me say this very clearly. Thank you for raising that. The topography of Aquaibum is one of the best for construction. We have a governor before now, an accomplished architect, who understands what topography means. He's done a lot. We also have a president now, by the grace of God, who was also a governor in Bayelsa State, who constructed roads in the worst topography of this country. Never before have you constructed one kilometer of road for one billion naira. Was it done in Akwaibo? Several. Not just claims, sir. I have copious documentary evidence. The Ekritam Road. Ekritam Road, 20 kilometers 
Farmers 